Hey friends, I'd like to take a moment to interrupt your regularly scheduled stream of content that makes you feel inadequate as an artist. The messaging that says, unless you're making thousands of dollars per week, that your artistic efforts aren't good or worth doing. I'm going to go out on a limb here and make the claim that I'm pretty sure the worst idea any artist ever had was to try to convert art or music into money as their primary goal. I'm going to use this video to back that claim up. At the moment, we exist in very odd times. Most human activity, when you zoom out enough, is dedicated to the maximizing or harvesting of all the available energy and materials in our environment. Believe it or not, this impetus actually has a biological basis. All large mammals exhibit this behavior set. For example, cows and goats will eat up all of the available grass in any given field where the field has limited space. In the same way, humans are presently harvesting the planet and unfortunately releasing carbon at many times the rate that it was sequestered, and we all know where that leads. In addition to the sciences and other pursuits of the mind, the creation of art and music is one of the only intelligent behavior patterns that diverges from mainstream mammalian behavior. Or in other words, it's one of the only ways that we can truly differentiate the human animal from cows and goats and other large mammals. If you're an artist or a writer or a scientist or someone who simply meditates, the basic banal human market world doesn't know how to interact with you directly. They have to divert you from your present activity to pull your mind back down to their level. They have to reorient your mind around value, scarcity, and commodification. As musicians, we are simultaneously all being bombarded by this marketing messaging that centers around a very clear narrative. That messaging is, unless you get this new thing, this plug-in, this chord pack, etc., you won't rise to the top, and you will wallow in obscurity forever. Now, if you don't think that music marketing has reached extreme levels of weird, check out the hilariously liberal use of the word ultimate in reference to music products. There is near zero creativity in the marketing space, but they are trying and succeeding in the domination of our minds. They are shaping the way that we think about creation. Most of these marketing tactics and campaigns rely heavily on making you feel as an artist inadequate. Now I'm here to remind you and to remind myself that you are enough. Your art is enough. You may be able to buy music gear and plays on streaming platforms, but you can't buy creativity, much less the fulfillment that you get of simply capturing the ideas and inspirations that you conceive of. Art itself is the reward. Creativity itself is the mindset of health. And to the marketer's dismay, it costs nothing and makes them nothing. Essentially, the argument that I'm forming here is that the frame of mind that makes money or material things the goal is inherently restricted in creativity. And it's not at all the same frame of mind that simply creates for creation's sake. Let's take me for example. Is my music the best music in the world? No. And it never will be. If my goal is to maximize the amount of people who think my music is the best music in the world, then what am I? Yeah, I'm simply a cow blindly eating all the available grass that I can get. If instead I make music itself the goal, then I've effectively cut the cord tethering me to the bad ideas and bad incentives that are driving human activity toward extinction. In isolation, my music is just that. Music. My expression. Only in comparison and commodification does my music potentially take on a negative or even a positive context. As a writer, you write because you want to tell a story. As a scientist, you study because you want to understand. And as a musician, you create because you want to express yourself. Now to further drive this point home, I think it's also fair to say that humans in a market sense don't really value things that are healthy or life-affirming. Instead, we value things that the marketers tell us to value. We value whatever carrot is dangling at the end of the string. And because of the mindset that it takes for people to do this kind of work, the people that are holding the carrot in front of you are not artists. They are not incentivized to increase the health or quality of human life. They are instead incentivized by the almighty dollar and the future material value that their efforts will yield them. So potentially now you're thinking, okay, but we all gotta eat. What's wrong with trying to make a little money while doing so? Nothing. So I'd like to dedicate the rest of this video to a couple suggestions that have worked for me throughout the years. First of all, if you wanna make money, stop. Put down whatever you're doing artistically and go do pretty much anything else. It will be easier, believe me. If, however, you can truly say the following sentence, I don't know what else I would do if not music, then consider the following. Number one, lower your living standards. When I finally decided that I needed to create for a living, I moved to a very inexpensive town in rural Ohio and lived in an extremely low-cost rental. 
This allowed me to work only part-time and focus my energy on learning and creating. Also, I didn't always have a car, but when I did, it was always a beater, and it still is to this day, because I'd much rather have a functional studio than a shiny new car. Number two, work a job that doesn't burn out your musical mind. Some of my best musical ideas that I had back in the day were not originally made in a studio, but rather sang or beatboxed into my phone from my job. I used to purposefully work mindless jobs like landscaping, doing labor, and food prep in kitchens. If you're working a management or marketing job that requires all of your attention all of the time, it's really difficult to have enough energy left over to create. There is no shortage of mindless jobs out there, and many of them actually pay a good amount too. Now, number three is support your community in earnest. Be heavily invested in the success of other people in your circle. This is maybe the most important one. Nothing exists in isolation. You cannot do this by yourself. The artistic life is hard. It's financially challenging and crushes you constantly. There is no way that you don't have a million things in common with the other people that are trying to do the same thing that you're doing, living an artistic lifestyle. And I'm not saying go out and network. Everyone knows when you're just talking to other people just to gain an advantage. Instead, be heavily, truly invested in their career and their success. Because what you both are working toward is something so much bigger than you or them. All of this to say, there's a massive amount of pressure coming from YouTube and other social media that has the potential to discourage creation unless it yields a profit. This can have a detrimental effect on not only your mental health, but it may even derail you as an artist and make you feel like you need to compromise what style of music you make. It could make you feel like you need to make your music more immediately palatable, homogenizing your sound and reducing the risks and quirkiness in your music that makes it truly unique and truly you. But if you look at the artists that have long-lasting, sustainable careers that span decades, it's because they stuck to their inspirations and made very little compromises to their craft. And now these artists are the standards upon which others are judged. The best part about making music that is true to your inspirations is that you'll wake up most days energized and excited to make music. It won't feel like a job, but instead an expression of you. The joy and energy that you get from creation itself will drive you forward. If you're making the music that you love, you aren't doing anything anything wrong no matter what mainstream messaging is trying to tell you. Okay, so in closing, I've had some extreme luck in this space. There isn't a day that goes by that my imposter syndrome doesn't kick in and remind me that I'm just a guy being weird in my studio or on stage and that I'm extremely privileged and lucky to be doing this at this level. But with that said, I actively recognize that all of this could change very rapidly. There could be family emergencies, I could lose a limb, the promoters may not want to book Papadocio or Earthcry anymore, and the world could go to shit or whatever. But see, that's what differentiates you and me from other people. Even if all of those things occur simultaneously, guess what? You and I will still be making music. We will still express ourselves however we can. Why? Because creativity and self-expression was a thing way before anyone needed a reason to do it. No one originally needed a career or had to be a headliner in order to justify their creations. When the likely human-caused giant fireball of Armageddon comes racing across the horizon, erasing any semblance of our existence, I hope that I'm surrounded by loved ones making music for the fuck of it. Don't stop. Let your creativity be an act of defiance in the noise and nonsense of modern human life. Now get off YouTube and go make some music. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.